an African perspective on the World Economic Forum. Hello and welcome. I am Afumea Yelio and this is News Analytica. This week, the global spotlight is on Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, as World Economic Forum convenes a special meeting on global collaboration, growth and energy for development. This gathering of over 1,000 leaders from business, government and academia, representing more than 90 countries, aims to tackle pressing global challenges across three core themes, revitalizing global collaboration, fostering inclusive growth, and catalyzing action on energy for development, each resonating deeply with Africa's aspirations and struggles. Of course, African leaders, including Nigeria's president, Bola Tinobu, and Rwanda's president, Paul Kagame, and over 35 ministers from across the continent are participating in discussions, aiming to bridge the growing north to south divide. However, beneath the veneer of diplomatic dialogue, a fundamental question lingers. Is there a genuine political will to address poverty and inequity? In today's episode, we will delve into the Riyadh Summit, criticisms, and African perspective on the World Economic Forum. Stay with us. The opening sessions of the World Economic Forum in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, echoed a resounding message. People must be at the heart of inclusive growth and developing human capital must be the focus for investment. But amidst the grandeur of this global gathering, a sovereign reality emerges. Poverty persists, casting a long shadow over the majority of the world, particularly in Africa. According to the Credit Suisse Global Wealth Report, in 2022, the world's richest 1%, those with more than a million dollars, owned 45.8% of all the world's wealth. Another study by World Inequality Lab found that the poorest 50% of people own just 2% of global wealth, while the middle 40% own 22%, and the richest 10% own 76% of total global net wealth. These numbers are not real improvements to feudal time statistics of 15th century, where the 1% owned over 90% of the land, hence the wealth, and remaining 99% share the rest. From the opulent halls of Riyadh to the distant corners of the African continent, this disparity is stark. While discussions within the forum revolve around collaboration, growth, and development, the harsh truth remains that millions still live in abject poverty. In the heart of Africa, the exploitation of cobalt in Congo fuels the global green revolution, yet the benefits rarely reach those living in the mines. About 70% of the world's cobalt comes from the DRC. It should have been good news for people in DRC, but multinational mining companies and their subcontractors purposely create poorly paying jobs that keep workers in abject poverty. The same is true for the diamonds of Sierra Leone, the uranium of Niger, and the gold mines of Sudan, and every other African nation with natural resources. The agendas from Riyadh WEF meeting highlight these crucial points. This special meeting seeks to explore how to drive solutions-oriented action to advance collaboration on critical areas for development and more inclusive global growth. However, critics argue that WEF meetings provide a convenient platform for large corporations to influence governments to their own benefit. Concerns about rising inequality, global trade tension, and technology conflicts cast doubt on the efficacy of WEF initiatives. Detractors argue that these discussions too often circle back to the same topics with the same participants each year. This scrutiny reveals a fundamental contradiction. While discussions at the World Economic Forum center around lofty ideals of collaboration and development, the glaring discontent between rhetoric and reality cannot be ignored. The WEF, like many multi-stakeholder endeavors, suffers from democratic deficits, reminiscent of feudal exclusivity. It operates as an exclusive invitation-only club where meaningful participants is predominantly reserved for world's most powerful governments, corporations, and civil society actors. Meanwhile, those most affected by its decisions, particularly the marginalized and disenfranchised, are often sidelined, lacking adequate channels for meaningful engagement or redress. This comparison highlights a fundamental hypocrisy. While the WEF purports to champion inclusive growth and development, it 
its structures and processes often perpetuate exclusion and reinforce existing power dynamics, much like the feudal systems of old. In the grand halls of global economic summits, the echoes of history reminds us that true progress requires not just dialogue, but a concerted effort to dismantle entrenched systems of privilege and ensure that all voices are heard and heeded. That is all for today, and thank you very much for watching. Make sure you join us again tomorrow for another edition of News Analytical.